Hi ladies and gents, it's Ed Seller coming to you with uh, a tutorial for these shabby chic flowers. Now I'll de be demonstrating how I came to creating these and um, you know they can look wonderful on a journal cover. So I'll just basically show you what I'm planning on doing with this particular journal. So and you've got some dangles there and these are flat backs, uh, flat back trim and I'll go into the details as I, as I process the, the video so yeah, um, <coughs> just lost my mojo for actually creating a journal journal as such with the papers and you know the, the techniques of adding things to the journals so I've been in creative mood by doing the page pockets and um, various different things I can actually go into the journal but not the journal itself. This is a journal I created from a hard book cover and I used the whites of the paper napkins and did a faux leather um, technique. I've just got my mouse in here to sort of pull it flat. So so that's the, the look of it and that's just actually coffee dye. So, and it really looks really rustic and on the sides I just put some uh, jute twine and I've got to do the third one there just to give it a bit of um, character I guess on the spine and one mistake I made was I put the hole at the bottom <laughs> which is meant to be at the top for hanging a dangle down and I will be demonstrating on how you can create your, your own dangles quite easily with just various beads, broken jewellery and um, even creating your own um, beading by just using newspaper and rolling it up. There's a te particular technique how to do that. So without further ado, um, I'll get on and show you some of the, the flowers. Um, and they're all just scrap material. If you go to uh, your goodwill, I know at the moment with the COVID-19, but check out your clothing, anything clothing that you're going to throw out can make flowers so they can come in a array, uh, array of different materials. Uh, this one was just, I believe, looking at it now, um, it could have been a table runner and you know, you, you don't worry about the, you can pull off the, the, the major ones um, but it's not made to be looking like that so and if you wanted to you can machine to stop the fraying edges but the fraying edges gives it a bit of character so that's one particular design I created the next one was a, a doily medallion if you get your old doily tablecloths sometimes they throw them out at the goodwill stores or your own if they're damaged and torn and worn or check your grandmother's stash <laughs> Uh, and this is just a medallion, a small one cut out from the centre of a, a doily. And this was just some netting from a curtain material. So, you know, that can look pretty effective. Um, this was another one. So, and that was just a smaller one. And I did have the button here. Here we go. Okay. So just check your stash for any buttons on clothing. Um, I use a lot of clothing in a lot of my, my products. Um, I do various different types of projects, not just only junk journaling. So, you know, the beaded trim. Now, if you don't have beaded trim, um, a lot of our products in Australia we have to order from overseas, like America or China or wherever. And so the other alternative to that was I had some vertical drapes, now I don't like vertical drapes <laughs> and I did have it here and you know the, um, I'll just move that out of the way, you know the pull cords down, now you can actually dye these with alcoholic inks, now if you don't know much about alcoholic inks I'll make a tutorial on how you can create your own from just using those felt pens we call them textures in Australia, so um, the fed pals, the actual, when your fed pal runs dry, don't throw them out because the innards um, have ink in them and you can create different colours. Um, so, you know, like, that's all I do. Th these are actually rounded beads. The other ones are actually flat back. So, 
they can hear totally, but if you leave them dangling, you're only needing to glue a certain section on there. Like that, and put your flower down there. And you can use laces, trims, whatever, um, strips of material. I know that the Bohemian Crafting um, trend, you just use whatever in various bright, fashionable colours. So you can use a lot of dangles and tassels and so forth. So these were actually totally round. Now I don't have them coloured, but you just cut them to your desired length. And all they are is just rounded beads, so, you know, it looks pretty like that. You can add more strands if you wanted to. So, so yeah, if you've got any vertical drapes and sometimes they get damaged at the bottom and you have to replace them, don't throw them out. They make wonderful um, additions to when you're crafting. This particular one here, as you can see, I've done the rounds and then just glued a flat back pearl there. So, and eventually I can teach you how to create your own flat back pearls. Very easy if you have a glue gun. Very, very easy. So, so these are um, just an array of various different flowers that I created um, in various different colours. You know, so these are very relaxing to do. Um, this might be a long video um, because I want to put everything into it that I possibly can to give you a, an idea of you know what you can actually do. A lot of this material here was just offcuts and scraps and even clothing, um, cutting down clothing. Um, this was a silk top or satin satin type top. Um, so there's an array of flowers and they're quite easy to do so I'm going to be showing you how you can actually do them. Now um, I can't recall um, the name of this particular style but what I have done as you can see on there I've actually like put it on that so do we have a vacant one? Okay we'll do it on that one there. And then you just put a flat pearl or a button or anything else like that. These are what they call the yo-yos. So I usually make a large yo-yo and a small yo-yo and put a flat cabochon in the centre there, as you can see there. So what I did was, you know, I did a, an array of all the pinks. And there's some pre pretty ones. And that's just cotton material that I actually frayed. So, and it just gives it that really shabby sheet look. Um, so there's a few of the pink ones. I hope I'm in. I hope I'm in frame. <laughs> so there's the pink ones, and I think I made about eight eight sets of that, um, but I didn't want to drag them all out. The next one was sort of like the blues. So, and that's with that um, beaded trim off the vertical drapes. So, and you know, you can add your buttons. And this one had a medallion from a crochet doily. So, and you know, they're fairly easy to make, as you will see. And these are actually called the yo-yo, yo-yo flower. And they're quite easy to make, so just cutting out a circle. And it doesn't have to be accurate, you don't need a, a template, or you can actually use a, you know those, you know those um, things in school that we had? Compass, yeah, you can actually, <laughs> and then draw your circle. And um, so there's two different size circles that created the, the two there. So as you can see, I made a set of all the, the blacks as on as you can see on there. I love making these. It was so much fun and I want to get back to doing more. And uh, I've seen quilts made out of them. They've made tons and then just sewed them together. So we had the, oh yeah, we had the blues there. Some blues. 
And then we did the, the burgundy. There's still more there. There's another black one. Um, so, so that's what I do. I actually just make this particular piece first, this one, and then I do the... I'll just get the plain. And then you do the flower on that, or you do the small yo-yo, and then put your button in there. So it's not a really good example. But, you know, there's your, your pinks and your burgundies. And then I did the set of golds and creams and beiges and absolutely love them. Absolutely love them. The button in there. So when you're adding them to your journal, you know, how gorgeous are they? Now they're all, all different styles, yet they, this, these two, these three are the same sort of uh, technique and then you've got this particular technique and then this particular technique. So there's three different techniques there, so I'll keep that button out. Now I keep all my buttons when I'm throwing out any clothing that is no good for the goodwill. Um, I take all the buttons off and then put them in jars according to the colour. And this was actually three dollars for a lot of buttons. So, but we're just going to be using this one today. So what I'll do, I've just realised I haven't got my glue gun on, so I'll just turn it on. And I'll be back in a minute because it'll heat up by the time I get through talking about the material. have is basically this um, satiny material and that came from I think a shirt or a tablecloth because the material was already cut out in squares or circles I can't recall because it's probably been cut out for years okay Now this was a curtain, this particular one. Um, it's sort of got like a crinkle cut um, feel to it. So it was just one of those light, very, um, I don't know what material you use. It's shiny and, and crinkly. So, so the whole technique is to create some rounds if you've got a glue gun. Now if you've got fabric glue, that will work as well. And so just cut up some of your rounds because that's what we're going to be using it on. Um, you can cut your rounds larger, which I have. Just trying to find it. Yeah, there's a, a larger one there. So it doesn't necessarily have to be any any particular size as long as it's a decent size to start off your, your flowering. So, so the whole concept of this now, I know my glue gun may take a while to heat up, so I may have to pause the video while the glue gun is heating up. Talk about not organised. I thought I was organised. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you've got your, your, your rounds, all you're doing is you're actually folding it in half and you're creating an ice cream cone. Now, when it's in half you turn one third over the top and then the other third under so then it creates the so all you're having to do we'll just see whether you get a bit of glue ok we do ok be very careful because this one's an actual really extremely hot glue gun Okay. So when you've done the glue, 
what you're doing is now I might speed up the camera so that it's not so tedious but the same process you make your ice cream cones one on the top and one underneath and all you're doing is you're adding a little bit of glue inside here and then a bit of glue there this is not the best glue gun but it's the only one I had on hand and you pick the better side to, to show you don't need much glue okay. so if you feel like it's not it's just a sort of show and tell because you want the you want the edges to, to be pretty even this is. and you just keep going round um, the glue gun's hot enough so you're correcting your tea so because you do need to secure it you don't need much glue I haven't used this glue gun for a while actually and you're doing a, a top layer as well so or you don't necessarily have to do a top layer it just depends on the fullness of the flower or how um, compact the flower is for your journal so, but these are more to, you know, to be made for the outside of the journals okay. I'm, out of, I'm out of practice <laughs> So I'll go with the next two. So the first layer takes about six. So you make your ice as you go, you make your ice cream cone. And it doesn't have to be, you know, like perfect circles because that's what gives it its um, character. You know, no flower has perfect petals. So and just watch the glue when you're using it because it is really hot this particular glue gun is really hot ok so that's 2, 4, 5 so we have one left so once again you fold it in half and, and it's third so you fold one third over one third under and then you're just doing a a touch of glue it's not really good not the best glue gun to use in this situation um, okay. now you can leave it like that and then just put a button So, you know, when you think of you putting it on the cover, and you're just putting the, what make it too long? I don't want to actually adhere them to this particular cover because this is not what I'm intending to, to use on here. But it just gives you an indication of you know what you can actually do so so there you go so you've got a, a, a beautiful flower and you know you can even sort of um, I know what a lot of people do is get a bit of um, dye it, yeah just stretch things and just do it on the corner just so that the ends actually look like they've got a bit of you know how you see roses with the dark edging so that's one particular um, flower now I'm just going to see how it goes for the second layer just to see 
Yeah, it would probably bulk it up too much, but I mean, it, it's up to you. You can actually iron and press it down. And uh, so that's one particular way of doing a flower. So you'll have to forgive me for the video. I'm not actually organised and prepared. Once my craft room gets done um, and complete, I'll be a bit more organised. This was one I actually started on. Um, this was just that, um, your rotary, I'll get it out of the way, um, what's it called, is that Anglo embroidery, so this is just an old um, filler case, so once again, ice cream cone, so if you remember ice cream cone, and all you're doing is just, you know, sort of putting a bit of glue at the top, so you're actually sealing them so they don't sort of fluff up too much. You don't want too much body on them. And you pick the better side to, to show. This might take eight petals, I think. So once again, your ice cream cone. And just make sure that the edges are even. It doesn't matter about underside. And there's your glue strings. Now if you don't have um, a glue gun, you can also use your rubber glue. Um, yeah. Actually I might actually just take them apart because I think they'll only need five. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's how good your glue is. <laughs> your hot glue gun. Okay. We'll start again. But this will show you and demonstrate, you know, like you see my mistakes and how I correct them. That will give you a chance to you know, then work out the best way for you. <coughs> yeah. One thing I've noticed lately too, you know, with the with the COVID-19, it's been so eerily quiet. And I don't know if that's a good thing um, or a bad thing, but I've noticed that nature seems to be a bit more... Um, forthcoming, you know, like everything seems to having a, a better growth, um, a better growth cycle. It's like, you know, the time stood, stood still and everything's having a chance to rejuvenate, you know, considering all those bushfires Australia had recently. Um, it was shocking, you couldn't breathe, it was just hor horrendous, you know, so I had you know, all the doors and windows shut and I could still smell the smoke. Um, okay. okay, so... needs to be brought in. So you can adjust them as you go. I'm working on my dining room kitchen at the moment.